Today I want to talk about Tor, the online platform that's revolutionizing everything from the war on drugs to internet privacy. Now, people use Tor to stay anonymous online, but they also make four really common errors that means they absolutely blow all the effort they've put in to stay anonymous. So today I'm going to share the top four ways that you can avoid blowing your online privacy using Tor. But backing up a little bit, what is Tor? Given that you're a citizen of the internet and you're watching YouTube, you may have already heard of Tor, but in case you haven't, it's basically the easiest way to stay anonymous online. Why would you want to browse the internet anonymously? Well, people are using Tor to do everything from buy drugs online, buy guns online, order hitmen. But it's not just for bad guys. Some people use Tor because they just don't want their personal private information being shared with marketers and corporations and the government. Anonymous bloggers and citizen journalists in dictatorships use it, and Journalists Without Borders recommends it. It's also handy if you're trying to whistleblow on government corruption, which is why Amnesty International also recommends it. Tor is also called the Onion Browser, and it gives you access to the dark web. It's kind of like Narnia, in that you can only get to parts of the internet through a special door, in this case, the Tor Browser. So how does Tor work? Tor runs your internet traffic through a series of randomly selected nodes or points that are run by volunteers all around the world. So your personal browsing information doesn't just go from your computer to the website that you're trying to reach. It gets bounced around all these different nodes. That means it's difficult for anyone who might be surveilling you to see what you're doing online. All they can see is that you went into the Tor network. They can't see what website you're accessing at the other end. It's the same way that you might like duck into a store or turn down an alley if you thought you were being followed by someone. To make the service even better, all of the traffic that goes into the Tor network is encrypted and decrypted and encrypted again multiple times as it bounces around. It's kind of like erasing your footprints. Now, you can't just access Tor from anywhere. You have to download the Tor browser. It's like kind of like a Chrome browser, but it's the Tor browser. And you can access that at Tor Project Org. How is Tor different from a VPN or virtual private network? Well, Tor has similarities and differences to a VPN. A VPN also encrypts your information and it acts as a middleman. So you connect to the VPN, which then connects to your website. So it's kind of similar in that way. The website that you're trying to access at the other end can only see the IP address of the VPN. It can't see your home address. So it's really great if you're in a foreign country, say Australia, and you want to access American television. You might use a US VPN, which means your internet traffic bounces from Australia to America and then to CNN, who thinks that you are a customer in America. I may have used this in the past. How else am I supposed to access election coverage from Australia? Anyway, even better, all your internet traffic is encrypted when you're using a VPN. So it's great if you're like browsing at a Wi-Fi hotspot and you don't want everyone to be able to access your personal information. But whilst Tor is completely free, a VPN usually charges you a small monthly fee. And whilst everyone else can't see your traffic, the VPN holder can. So it's not completely foolproof. And a VPN can't get you into the Tor network. So if you're looking for the magical door into the dark web, you're still gonna need Tor. Now, Tor isn't foolproof either. The police routinely bust people who are using Tor for all the wrong reasons. So here it comes, the four top ways that people blow their cover on Tor and how you can avoid them. Number one, using the same username and or password on Tor that you would use on the regular internet. Guys, the whole point of using Tor is that you hide your identity. Don't use the same identity on the common internet that you would use on Tor. If people see your username on Tor and they search for it on the regular internet and find you, they can then access your IP address, which means you've just blown your cover. Not only that, but everything that you've written under that username is also public. So people can see everything that you've been doing, when you've been doing it and where you've been doing it. Pick a username and password that's totally random and for extra cover, don't keep a record of that on your person, on your laptop. Use your memory, guys. As yet, the government still can't read it. Number two, accidentally downloading malware that infects the Tor browser and lets the government see what you're doing. Guys, if it looks suspicious, don't download it. 
I like to think of that as cosmic karma for all the people that are like pirating stuff online. Number three, keeping digital evidence like metadata in your photos. Guys, don't post unnecessary stuff on the dark web. If you're gonna post a photo, make sure you delete all of the metadata, like the time and the place where the photo was taken. And number four, leaving physical evidence on the stuff that you're selling on tour. Take for example, US resident Michael Fosia. He used a tour network to illegally sell a gun to an FBI agent, and he left his fingerprints on the gun. He's now serving 15 years in federal prison. Don't be like Michael. So both Tor and VPNs allow you to do all sorts of stuff on the internet, like report on the government and buy drugs and buy guns and all that stuff. But wherever there is crime, there are the police. So it's just as easy for the police to stay anonymous as it is for you. So psych viewers, don't forget, be a responsible internet citizen and don't forget to be awesome.